Today I'm going to be bringing you guys some essential Dragon's Dogma 2 tips that you need to know when you are going through your playthrough. Some of these are going to be fairly basic, working our way up to some much more advanced stuff. And by the nature of this video there will be some small spoilers, however I will try to keep these as minimal as possible whilst going through the list. I will give a shout out if anything is going to be particularly spoilful towards the story if it is your first time playing through the game as it will be for most people watching this right now. So firstly, when your health bar reaches zero, you don't actually die right away if you are quick enough to open up your inventory and you can use a curative and save your life. This will save you reloading or using a wake stone and you need to have anything curative in your inventory that does health. So literally anything like these Salbrus drafts, any of the fruit robberants or any of the other robberants that will do health. You can see here this one does stamina, so these obviously won't work, but anything that does recover health will keep you alive if you do get downed. When you go into the quest tab, some of the quests you are given will be timed quests. If so, where this hand is on the menu right now, it will actually show you a egg timer or a hourglass timer instead. And this will show you as a little icon next to it instead of the hand. And that will show you that it is a time sensitive quest, meaning that if you do want to complete it, you should definitely prioritize that one because it can mean that things like NPCs are killed or are taken somewhere else or are not in the right place for the quest to finish if you don't do it right away which can hinder your progress in that particular quest line for that playthrough obviously if you don't know dragon's dogma is designed to have new game plus which is what i am in right now which is why i'm here on the very starting quest on level 42 but if you do want to get it done in that playthrough then make sure you do those time sensitive quests as soon as you see the little hourglass icon now slight spoiler for this next one because i'm going to show you the full map but the game does not make you unlock everything or see everything there is to offer just by doing the main story quests so some exploring and interacting with other characters is a great idea for example i have finished the game like i said i've gone through the whole of uh, the end game cycle and i've now restarted the game on my account so i'm for level 42 but right back at the beginning of the game and i haven't unlocked the magic archer or warfarer because they are slightly more out of the way i am going to do that on this playthrough but haven't done it up until this point because it doesn't actually tell you to do it also i haven't seen medusa and the sphinx for the first time around so obviously you can see on the map here this is everything unlocked this is the whole map available and there is tons and tons of stuff i'm not going to go into too much detail in this video to save on spoilers for some newer players or people who haven't explored as much but you definitely want to be going around and having a little look at what you can see and find because there is lots of very very cool hidden features in the game or at least features they don't push down your throat now when you are going around the world map you will pick various things up a lot of these things can be fresh ingredients such as fruit or plants that are fresh now what you want to do is combine these asap otherwise they will go rotten you can combine these into salubrious drafts you can make them into robberants you can make them into dried fruit dried meats whatever you've got and once you've combined them that will stop them from going rotten additionally to this if you go to any inn if you are in the capital of vernworth here you can simply head up to the inn you can go onto the organized storage and you can click deposit and you can actually put anything in there if you actually have a look in my box here you'll be able to see i have some rotten stuff that i've just thrown in there because you know i don't really want to have it in my inventory but if you do put stuff in for example this ripened apple hasn't gone rotten and that's been in there since the first playthrough so if you do put stuff in obviously i should have got onto that a little bit quicker given that i've got quite a lot of rotten fruit and stuff here but you can actually stop it going rotten by combining it or putting it into this now when you are in this menu if you have got some rotten stuff like i have you can actually combine things so you can go onto here and you can combine them into robberants such as that or you can go ahead and combine any of the other stuff sometimes the rotten stuff will be allowed to be combined into lantern oil which is why i have 46 of it but not everything can be so if it's not useful to you either sell it or get rid of it but as long as you combine in those fresh ingredients as soon as you possibly can then you will be able to keep hold of them and use them as curatives now another tip that's really really useful is that you can use other vocations augments when you are playing any other vocation so if you want to make a specific build certain augments from different vocations that may come into play in that so you can see right here this playthrough i have started off as a thief last time i started off as a fighter then went into warrior and then mystic spear hand this time we started as a thief and you can see if i go into my augments here i have all of these available that i've collected over the other vocations that i have played so you can see if you hover over them in the top middle here it will tell you the vocation so subtlety is actually from the thief but then we have metal from the fighter vitality from the warrior we've got opulence from the mystic spear hand and so on and 
so forth. And what you can then do is equip these down here. You can equip up to six augments at once. So you will have to choose which ones you want. Obviously, I've got way more than that unlocked now. And you will if you play several different classes as well. But you can pick the ones that will most benefit your class or your playstyle. And then you can make a super build with these. Now, there is some that are super worth getting in general. If you are on your first playthrough, for example, the Mystic Spear Hand will give you opulence, which I'm on here, which says increased gold obtained when acquiring coin pouches. This is nice just to get you up on the gold whenever you are exploring and grabbing it it's just going to give you a bit extra which is always nice you also have this one from the mystic spear hand which is called refulgence which increases the amount of rift crystals obtained when acquiring rift fragments and the like so things like when you activate rift stones also gives you extra and this again can be really good if you aren't particularly high up on the amount of rift crystals that you have uh, we're going to get into a bit more detail on how you can get more people to hire your main pawn in just a second but this is a great way that you can get additional rift crystals if you are wanting to spend them on anything in particular and of course allowing you to hire some higher level pawns to help you in your gameplay. Now, increasing your relationship or rapport with an NPC can unlock items and other special features, so it can be super worthwhile doing, especially with vendors or other notable characters in the storyline. I'm trying to do this with as little spoilers as possible, so I'm not going into great depth with that in this particular video. But what you can do to increase your relationship is give them items. Now, if you actually want to check which items are going to work, if you go into your menu and click on history and then look at the NPC logbook, then you look for the character that you want to interact with. So you can scroll through every single character in the game. And if we just go down and let's say we want to interact with Edoriel, who is a female elf in the Sacred Arbor, which if you haven't been there, is the city of the elves. Likes, adorable items and beautiful items, so things like flowers will work. Most NPCs will take the bundles of flowers, and if you're not sure on what an NPC's name is, you can simply go up to them and interact with them, and you will see on the top of the text box, this guy is called Jean, so we can then look for him on the history list if we want to see how we can increase our relation there. So we would simply go in here, click on history, click on NPC logbook, and go down to Bajon. You can see here, beautiful items and fancy items is what he likes there. So we can go ahead and give some flowers, and that should work. Now, if there is a particular NPC that you do want to reach max affinity with, if you keep giving them gifts, once you do give them enough gifts to reach max affinity from simply giving gifts, their cheeks will go blush or rose, and that will indicate that you've given them max affinity. Now, sometimes you do need to increase this further by doing quests and such, if that is available for them and do know at least for some npcs if not all i haven't conclusively found this out yet but when you're giving gifts it's better to do one and then sleep till the next day and then do another one as some npcs do require this such as in the elvish village if you're trying to learn the elvish term for your main pawn then you need to give a gift to the innkeeper and then sleep then do it again sleep then do it again and do this three days in a row but we're going to touch on that in just a moment so one major feature in dragon's dogma 2 is different pawn specializations which can be unlocked by using an associated trait skull on your main pawn. This is great for whichever specialization you want them to have, but it will also increase the likelihood of others hiring your main pawn so that you can get more Rift Crystals. As a quick limited spoiler overview, I'm going to give you a quick indication on how you can get some of these. I haven't worked out all of them, but some of them I have. Now, you can see where these are if you go into your status page and have a look on the specialization. And it will also tell you if you're speaking to a pawn either in the rift or on the road as you are going along your journey. You can see what specialization they have. So, Woodland Wordsmith is, of course, the L-speaking one. So, first things first, if you do want to get your hands on the Logistician, this can be unlocked after completing the side quest, The Heal of History which you can find down here in the slums. You will need to complete some of the main story quest to get this done. But essentially, when it is available, you'll be able to speak to Kendrick, who will be down in this area. And once you've completed this quest, again, with limited spoilers here, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, you can then speak to him again, and he will give you the Logisticent Tome so that you can unlock that specialization for your main pawn the forager term can also be obtained after completing the same heel of history quest here but instead this time from malcolm if you want the chirurgian's term which is the healing term one where they use curatives on themselves and you when needed this can be acquired from flora in the merchant area of venworth so you can see just up in this merchant quarter area here after completing the medicampment predicament quest and then if you do want to of course get the woodland wordsmith or the speaking elvish 
uh, ability. This woodland wordsmith tome is obtained by giving Grisha in the Sacred Arbor, which is over here on the map if you do want to see that one, gifts that she likes once per day for three days. So I'll give you a little bit of a tip with this. She likes the bunches of flowers. So you want to do this, you want to give it to Grisha, rest till the morning, do it again, do it again. Once you've done this three times, they will then give you the woodland wordsmith tome so that your main pawn can speak Elvish. Now there are more specializations in the game like Hawker, but I'm not currently sure on how to get these, but I will have full videos on the ones that I've mentioned just previously in the video on the channel very very shortly as well as ones like the Hawker ones have unlocked if and when we can unlock these as well so stay tuned for all of those if you are interested. Now one crucially crucially important feature of Dragon's Dogma 2 is that pawns can get the Dragon's Plague. Now this is something that happens when they go into the rift and they get infected with the so-called Dragon's Plague. It's very very simple to work out how and if pawns have this, you simply go up to them and interact with them. Now you can see here this pawn's got blue eyes. If their eyes have gone red, although it might look quite cool, it actually means that they have the Dragon's Plague. So do not hire them if they have this because essentially what can happen is they can go rogue, they start ignoring the Arisen's command and eventually will go on a rampage if you sleep at an inn and kill all of the NPCs in the village or town that you're in. Now this isn't sort of a be-all and end-all as these important NPCs will respawn after around one week of in-game time so you will need to sleep at the inn a few times but not all NPCs will come back or I don't think they do anyway so it's just the important ones so you can continue with the main story quest and such but it is a pain so it's worth avoiding this. Now your main pawn can get this as well and if that does happen all you need to do is simply pick them up with the grab command like E and lob them into any body of water in the game if you notice that they do have this red glowing effect on their eyes and then simply go back to any rift stone and resummon them to resurrect them. So it is a pretty easy fix to get rid of if it is on your main pawn and if you do get it on any of your allied ones that you've hired just dismiss them and it should keep your game safe of the dragon's plague. But like I said don't fret if you have already been struck by the plague and there has been an incident and an outbreak and they've killed a lot of the NPCs because like I say the important ones will respawn spawn within around a week of in-game time so just sleep at the inn a few more times and be sure to get rid of the pawn that has got the dragon's plague so that it doesn't happen again. Now one thing you will notice as you are going around in Dragon's Dogma is your pawns will tell you stuff like there's chests up there or there's treasure nearby and such and for example like this one here in Vernworth you can't actually get up to it very easily unless you've got certain core abilities but what you can do is simply pick up one of your pawns if you hold the throw button and simply throw them up onto the ledge you can see that they are then in the right spot and you can select the go command and when they are up here you can see that they will pretty often go and just grab the chest for you or grab any loot that's in the area. So this can be quite a nice workaround if you can't find a way up to a specific place. You can just throw your pawns up there and if you do run too far away and you select the to me command they will eventually just follow you and teleport towards you so they can't get stuck in a location either. So this can be a pretty nifty way to get yourself hands on with some loot if you are finding it in a particularly difficult spot. You can see here that you can do equipment enhancements. Now a lot of you will probably have worked this out already but it is worth noting where it says Vermundian up at the top here there is four different styles of base upgrades or enhancements available and these are going to be the Elvish, the Vermundian, the Batali and the Dwarven. I'm not going to go into too much detail and spoil this just in case any of you haven't experienced all of the different ones that are on offer yet so I'm not going to go into too much detail about what they do but they do all benefit some different stuff so you can see this one is uh, a balanced approach some of them favor strength some of them favor magic etc and so on so if you do want to make your weapon particularly when you get towards the end game section where some of these are like the best weapons in the game you can get you do want to make sure that you are enhancing them with the best possible compatibility for your weapon and for your build so you can make the most out of these and it is worth noting that once you've got all three done once you get to a certain point in the main story and bit of a spoiler warning for this one maybe skip the next 20 seconds if you don't want main story spoilers but you will eventually get to a point where you find the dragon forged and he will then enhance your gear for a fourth time if you've already upgraded it three times into a dragon forged variant which is a big upgrade and obviously gives you a good damage boost towards the item as well so that is another level that you can have but i'll leave it there for now won't go into too much detail again to avoid as many spoilers as possible now one final thing that i want to cover here just very quickly is the use of fairy stones now you can see here i've got three in my inventory i've got another four or five in my bank and that is because i have actually played 
played through the end game section once. So if you haven't already got here, this is going to be a bit of a spoiler. So again, skip towards the end section of the video if you don't want any main story spoilers whatsoever. I'll keep them as minimal as possible. But essentially, when you get to that end game level, and there's kind of a story continuation in a different version of the realm you're in, shall we say, there is a much higher chance to get better loot, more fairy stones, and you end up with quite an abundance of these if you go around completing the quests and fighting monsters and such. So you actually can take these into your secondary playthrough with you. You can see, as I say there, I've got three on me and a few in the bank as well, which makes fast travel a lot, lot better. And they do cost 10,000 to buy from each vendor, but you can just pick them up from chests and from mobs in this end game environment. Environment, so you'll be able to get quite a few if you do go ahead and play through the game again Which is gonna be much more beneficial for you But it is worth noting that when you start a new game from the end game your port crystals do not stay where you had placed them But they will in fact be given back to you in your bank So do be prepared to go ahead and grab these and take them to wherever the location you might want them And don't forget about them if you do start a new playthrough because of course they won't be placed And if you do leave them in the bank and get somewhere new and want to place one down you do need to have it on you in order to be able to do this so just a quick heads up with that one so that is going to be it for today's video if you have found the video useful and informative please do drop me a subscribe down below as it massively helps out the channel make sure you've got the notification bells on because i am going to have tons and tons of dragon's dogma 2 content coming to the channel very very shortly so you don't want to miss out on any of that if you have found the video useful please do drop me a like down below and let me know in the comments if there's anything specific you would like me to cover about dragon's dogma that you've been searching for and you can't find a video guide on just yet Other than that i'll catch you guys again very shortly in a brand new upload so take care and peace